It is the front page a Saturday edition, a town hall meeting on the COVID crisis. Today's topic, where is my check? Getting some personal financial help for families and individuals. We want to thank the Independent Professionals Association and Council President Emeritus Herb Wesson for their sponsorship of this program. We so appreciate you. Um, and we have on the line with us right now uh, Robert Salcedo, the CEO of Community Build, Angela Reddick Wright, the super attorney, super lawyer, as she's been named by her peers. We're being joined now by another special guest. We are taking your phone calls, by the way, 520-KJLH, 520-5554. Joining us right now on the phone, a glass ceiling shattering leader. Uh, she's the daughter, proud daughter of working class immigrants. Uh, she became, in January of this year, the first Latina City Council President in the Council's 170 year history. And I am talking about the Council President from the 6th uh, dis District, Nuri Martinez. Welcome to the show. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm, I'm so glad that oh. you could uh, join us because I know you have a very busy Saturday today. Oh, I appreciate you letting me get the word out on all the stuff we're trying to do to help folks. So thank you for welcoming me on your program. Well, speaking of stuff, and that is our issue, that's our focus today, how we help folks. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, you know, you were the one that when we had the rent control uh, pass in the state of California, and then there was a gap between when the law passed and when it went into effect. Mm -hmm. Some people were struggling with having their rents hiked in that interim period. You stepped in with renter's relief uh, for those folks, and you're doing it again now. Right. So last uh, October, when the governor signed AB uh, 1482, there was a loophole. And so you had about two and a half months where people were being um, rent gouged um, in, in California. But, you know, we were very, very concerned about folks who, after the law did not go into effect right away, it went into effect on January 1st. So some landlords took advantage of that and started to rent gouge our folks. And so we went into work. We went to work. And we put together an emergency renters relief fund to try to cover the difference for folks that could not um, pay the difference of that rent gouge. And so in thinking about what's happening now and folks not being able to make the rent this month, and it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. Poor people who are struggling to pay um, the rent and, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. Those folks, after this is all done, are going to suffer the biggest economic blow out of anyone. And I recognize that. And so the, the infrastructure for this program is already there. It's being administered by HHSID in partnership with the Housing Rights Center, who I partnered with last time. And, you know, I've already kicked in a million dollars of my discretionary money. Um, I'm fundraising for more. And I want to fight for those, for those federal dollars that are going to be coming to Los Angeles. want to make sure that some of that money gets gets invested in this renters relief fund so that when this is over people have access to money and are able to make their rent i think it's really important because this idea of forbearance just means you get a break and you can pay it later but for working class people who you know are barely paying their rent right now month to month catching up three months of rent is is a, is a tall order Correct, and people are not necessarily going to get back to work immediately. That's the other concern that we have. We need to ensure we're feeding people and that we're providing the bare essentials. But when this is over, not everyone's going to be able to go back to their job. Some of these jobs are just not going to be around anymore, especially in the restaurant industry, especially for the janit janitors, the hotel workers, and so on. And so we've got to create a special fund that low-income folks can say, here's how I can apply and we can help people not get behind on their rent. Because you're right, two or three months go by. Um, we've, we've passed an eviction moratorium. Um, given the circumstances, we've passed the eviction moratorium. You've got, all you need to do is give a uh, written notice to your landlord that you cannot pay the rent due to the COVID-19 and you've been laid off, or you're taking care of a child who's not in school, or you're taking care of a loved one who's sick, an elderly person or you yourself came down with symptoms um, um, due to COVID-19 and you can't work. These are all reasons why um, you should not be um, evicted from your place. That's already in place, but we're giving the city of Los Angeles also extended the, the, the amount of time that you have to pay the, the rent back. 
um, from six months to 12 months. That's a whole year. But nevertheless, like you just stated, people who are barely making ends meet, the minute you get behind on any of your bills creates an enormous economic um, hurdle for you. And so I just want to make sure that we're thinking, uh, we're, we should already be thinking recovery mode, and we should already be thinking about where are these dollars coming from and laying out programs um, that are going to work to be able to assist people immediately once this is over. And so, I mean, one thing I want to say that I think, you know, yourself, uh, Council President Martinez, and you working with uh, Council President Emeritus Herb Wesson, it's just been a really great example of, you know, how our lawmakers should work and, you know, how when we as African-American and Latino communities work together, we can move mountains. And it's certainly heartening to see it in action right now. Yeah, me and Herb um, did something that uh, we, we've been talking about, this recovery effort, and what do we need to do to ensure that our communities are not left out like they were during the Great Recession in 2008. You know, we bailed out companies, we bailed out banks, corporations, and we didn't bail out people. And so Herb and I were thinking about, we need to ensure that we have something called the People's Bailout in Los Angeles. It's to ensure that these stimulus dollars are going to be coming to Los Angeles. If there's a round two, of a stimulus package, we need to ensure that renters are included in that package, and we need to ensure that people of color are included in that package, so that we can create job programs back in our community that, that money needs to get reinvested in communities of color. Because as you and I well know, um, these are the last folks people think about, these are the last communities that people ever think about investing, and we need to ensure that we are creating the job opportunities back in these communities because People were living paycheck to paycheck before COVID-19. What's going to happen to these communities after this is all said and done is going to be devastating. I mean, I saw it on Thursday. We gave out 2,600 boxes of groceries in my district. We were supposed to stop giving out food at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We were there till past 4 o'clock, and we must have seen about, you know, three or 4,000 cars in line waiting to get 40 pounds of groceries for the week. I mean, the, the, the economic devastation, the desperation in people's eyes, it was heartbreaking. Um, you know, people asking, are you going to do this every day? Will you be here on Saturday? This is only going to get me by for a couple of days. We need to do this again. And I'm working with um, the County Lab um, LA County Federation of Labor to do another event like this in my district. Diapers, baby formula, milk, things that families depend on um, that are either they can't find in the local grocery store or they just don't have the money to buy. So Council President um, Nuri Martinez, if we want to keep track of these type of events um, that are that you're doing from your office, uh, would we look, keep our eye on your website? Is that what we would do? Social media, I post, you know, the minute I posted the, um, for example, our effort that we did on, on Thursday to feed, you know, to feed folks and come by and pick up your weekly groceries. As soon as that went up on social media, it's just it spread like wildfire. People were calling the office asking if it was only for my district. We fed anybody who was in line, by the way. And so when we do it again, we'll post it on, the, on our website or our social media. And anyone is welcome to come. Um, and, you know, we don't have any boundaries in Los Angeles. Although we're all separated by districts and there's 15 of us, uh, we all know that we're one people, we're one family, and we're one city, and we need to take care of each other. We've got to do this, and we've got to stick together. We're going to get through it. It's going to be painful, but we have to be prepared to help the media in our communities. And, and those are the working poor that unfortunately sometimes get left behind. Every time there is a catastrophe, a crisis, those folks are the last people that we think about. They've got to get ahead of the line. Um, uh, Council um, President Nuri Martinez, you're on the phone also with Robert Salceda, who's the CEO of Community Build, and Angela Reddick Wright, who is a labor attorney and super lawyer, um, and they've been answering folks' questions. Um, Robert, I know you guys, you, you mentioned you have a food giveaway on Tuesday um, at the 88th Street uh, Temple Church of God in Christ, and Thursday, Lamert Park Office of Community Build. What time are those food giveaways? Yes, thank you for asking. The food giveaway on Tuesday, I'm asking everyone to get there at 11 o'clock, and we give the bags out till we run out. Um, and then in Lamert Park, that's 10 o'clock, and that's at 43rd and Degnan, at our corporate offices. Um, what what I'm, I'm encouraging people to do, as I said, to get there early, primarily because what we're seeing over the last couple of weeks 
is we've been get, doing food give, grocery giveaways for a while, but we've never run out. And it breaks my heart when you know you see people standing in line and, and then the, there's no more food to give out. So get there as early as you can. Um, I also want to encourage the listeners to go back to that website I mentioned earlier, uh, the Community Response System website, which is www.crs. SLA.org. And the reason I want you to do that because there are other programs that we're posting. Uh, right. USC, USC will be launching some um, uh, groceries very soon. We're working with them as a partner to do that okay. in part of town. So and we'll circle back on some of that stuff before we finish the show. Also, absolutely. all of it Thank is up at kjlhradio.com, or soon will be if we just found out about it. Council um, President Nuri Martinez, what would you, where would you tell people to start? If you know, if we want to find out about the renter's relief, if we if we see our family uh, financial disaster, you know, coming at us um, in 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 the front, you know, in front of us, we can see it coming. What would you suggest folks do uh, in the city of Los Angeles? Well, the first thing is uh, the motion was introduced this past um, Tuesday, so we're not voting on this um, on this particular motion to to reinstate the workers. I'm um, sorry, the renters' relief fund until we meet again, and so um, that's important to know. The money is not available today; it will become available within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're just trying to put everything in place. Uh, but the more, most important thing I want to tell folks is you cannot get evicted. Um, as we currently speak. There is an eviction moratorium in the city of Los Angeles um, until this whole pandemic is over. And so no one, if a landlord tries to evict you, they cannot. You've got a legal right. Um, the city of Los Angeles will defend you. Um, there are, some landlords are sending out letters and notifications in an attempt to try to recover their money or to try to get folks to pay rent. Those folks who are working, who are still working and can pay they, their rent, they should. They're not going to be covered by this ordinance because you haven't lost your job due to COVID-19. Uh, but those who have, you are, you are protected by the city of Los Angeles. You have to have written notification to your landlord. Um, there's a lot of people that are scared. There's a lot of people that are being told not to pay their rent. Um, unfortunately, the city of council and the city of Los Angeles does not have jurisdiction over telling someone not to pay their rent. Somebody needs to pay that rent. Um, now, if we, if the federal government freezes rent and mortgages and they're gonna cover that rent and that mortgage, that's ideal. Um, I doubt that the federal government, given, given the politics, is going to do that. Um, and so we want to encourage people who, who can't afford to pay their rent or pay some of their rent or work something out with their landlord. I think that's an important, important message to uh, get out to our folks. Um, now, if you can't, just submit in, in writing why you cannot pay your rent. And the Renters Relief Fund will be available for folks to access as soon as this pandemic is over. Um, and the folks administering the fund are going to be HCID, which is our housing department, and the Housing Rights Center, which is a nonprofit that I partnered with last year. They're, they're great um, to be able to hand out the checks um, and make sure that families understand how this is going to work. Uh, we don't have that in place now because we haven't voted on the motion, but we will in the next uh, week or two. So that's coming. All the information, uh, we're going to try to get it out as, as much of it um, through the press or you can contact my office. Um, the information will be on my website. It will also be on the Los Angeles Housing Department's website as well, so you can follow the guidelines and who qualifies. But we're trying to make it as simple as possible. We're not trying to create a bureaucratic nightmare. It worked really well last year. Uh, we helped a lot of folks um, as long as they showed proof of their economic um, status and that they were being um, rent gouged, they were able to qualify and a check was written out to their landlord so they can make up that difference. And I know you have to go. I, I thank you for, for doing this. I think it's so important that we look at, you know, covering people instead of just delaying the bills. It Would it make any difference for us to, uh, you know, call our, our council people if we're not in your district or call the housing authority and say, look, we think this is an important program. Um, it's great that you've kicked in all this money from your uh, from your discretionary funds, but certainly we're going to need more to really cover people, right? Yeah, you know what? I also was very encouraged. I was reading um, last night. Um, I was reading um, on the internet. Uh, D.C., Chicago, Nevada are all doing similar renters relief programs for their for their cities and their state, which is great news. Uh, D.C. just launched there. Their mayor announced it uh, over the weekend, so she's doing something about trying to get folks um, 
money to be able to make the rent. LA County just announced last week that they're doing a very similar program to what have launched on the renters relief fund. So people are watching and they're starting to figure out, okay, maybe we can use other dollars to help people with, with this rent issue. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I, that brings me a lot of joy because I think people are paying attention that one, we've got to put money in people's hands as soon as possible to be able to buy, buy groceries, diapers, the bare necessities and pay some rent so that people are not falling behind. And so I'm, I'm, I'm actually not too worried about council. I think um, folks know what this was like when we voted on it unanimously back in October of last year. And I think other council members are starting to sort of um, figure out what they're going to be able to contribute. But we do need to go fight for the federal dollars to add more money into this relief fund and the philanthropic community of folks who want to donate. I'm trying to create a link to this relief fund so that we can get outside help. So that people can, you know, have access um, to money so that they can pay the rent. So there's a bunch of other stuff I'm working on to be able to grow this fund and not only cover my district, but cover it, but cover people citywide because that's really what we need to do. Council President Nuri Martinez, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for having me. Indeed. Okay, we still have folks calling in. Uh, Robert Salcedo, Salcedo, CEO of Community Build, and uh, Attorney Angela Reddick Wright. Uh, let's move back to the phones. I'm hoping you guys uh, can answer folks' questions. We're going to go to Bobby from Inglewood. Good morning. Can you hear me? I do. Welcome. Uh, I'd like to say you're a super host, Dominique, and you always Thank have you. super guests. I wish other people in the country could hear your shows and stuff because you're very informative but my yeah. question real quick is too uh i'm on workers comp and i'm wondering will i receive a stimulus check because i don't pay taxes or do any tax forms and the second question from my wife is there's a video going around saying that we have the people that receive money uh they're going to have to pay taxes on it in the next tax period thank you very much you're super i listen to your answer off the radio thank you bobby i appreciate it um do you want to tackle that attorney reddick right I'm sure. So he's on workers' comp. Will he receive a stimulus check? Um, the the uh, basis for the stimulus check is if you file taxes. So if you have filed your taxes in 2018 or 2019, then you will be eligible to receive the funds. Um, if you have not filed, um, the IRS has created an opportunity for folks to go online, uh, fill out a very simple form, um, to see if they qualify. So I would encourage you that if you haven't filed to, to fill out that form and that should let you know whether you qualify or not. The second question I didn't hear quite here, Dominique. He what wants to know, he says there's a video going around and we got to watch these viral videos because some of them are virally full of crap. Um, but he says there's a video going around saying that people are going to be taxed on their stimulus money. Um, I don't believe that that's the case. I think this is considered um, direct relief to individuals to try to help them get through this situation. Again, I would talk to your tax professional or your accountant um, or check on the IRS website, but as, it's my understanding that individuals that are receiving the, the stimulus, check, stimulus checks as individuals or couples will not be taxed. It may be a different situation for businesses that are applying for relief under the Paycheck Protection Act or other provisions for businesses All right and I'm, I'm reading um, something from wpde.com uh, it's a local news channel saying that it's not taxable it's not considered taxable income uh, if that's the case that video is decidedly wrong uh, Mr. Salcedo did you want to say anything about that I think Angela's done a great job of covering that already um, Ed from the Inland Empire good morning Ed are you with me I guess we've I guess we've lost Ed. Um what I'm under Okay, just one second. I'm understanding he wanted to know if the stimulus check is a loan that has to be paid back. My response to that is no. Um but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. And and I know it's really confusing because there's stimulus opportunities and benefits for individuals and couples and families, and then there's stimulus opportunities for businesses. So businesses are being held to a different standard. Much of what they receive will be treated as a grant, um, but there are conditions on that. So, but for the, um, the monies that are going to individuals, um, those are being provided without any additional tax obligations. 
Excellent. Um, did I hear another caller on the phone whose name I don't have? Uh, hello? I guess not. Hello? Okay. Oh, there you are. Um, good morning. Who's this? My name is Faye, and I'm a property owner in Lamert Park. All right. Well, you're on the radio, Say. Great. Um, so, as I said, I'm a property owner in Lamert Park, and property owners in our community do not qualify for the PPP program like large real estate development companies do. Renters have been told, in essence, that they don't have to pay rent, and although we understand the reasoning behind that, we no longer have the revenue needed to fix toilets, pay utilities, and pay our um, maintenance people because we survive on extremely low profit margins. And in my case, I have no profit. I actually supplement my rentals with my own income. Wow. The rent, the so rent what is the question? Losing, the rent we're losing will never be recovered in many cases because renters with large balances are more likely to move than to pay back the rent when all of this is over. Okay, so what is your question? I mean, I think, okay, so um, I guess we lost Faye. Here's the thing. That's, I think that's one reason why something like Renner's Relief that Council Member um, Herb Wesson and Council President um, Nuri Martinez were talking about is important. Um, Attorney Reddick Wright, do you have anything uh, you want to add to what Faye said? Relief for landlords, um, especially those that are mom and pop building owners. We don't want to see people losing their properties. Right. I would just encourage them, in addition to what the city of L.A. is toying with in terms of new ordinances, as well as the county, um, encourage her to see if she qualifies under um, the Federal Stimulus Paycheck Protection Act. And that's for individuals or that's for businesses, even small businesses are, um, you know, folks that operate, quote unquote, mom and pop shops where if they can show that they are losing so much in terms of revenue or in terms of their overhead, they may qualify for a stimulus relief under that particular provision. The Great. only issue is they may have to pay that back because that's intended to cover businesses that have employees and that plan to bring their employees back or right. allow those employees to continue okay. working. So you got to leave it there. Funds. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got to take a break. I'm sorry, Attorney Reddick. Right? No problem. Um, we'll be back uh, with our final thoughts right after this. Radio Free 102.3 KJLH.